Guys, seriously, you have to stop doing this when you're embedding and upgrading gear. There's a ton of intricacies actually to upgrading gear and understanding the embedding system and things that may actually seem pretty confusing. I'm going to break all those things down for you here in this video so you understand all of them so you never have to ask a question again. There are a ton of really useful tips that can make your gear a lot stronger than it currently is and some stuff you definitely don't understand about embedding. Guys, I put a lot of work into these videos. If you could really quick right now, scroll down and hit that subscribe button and let me know you subscribed in the comments and like the video while you're at it. That means said, welcome to this Wolong Fallen Dynasty blacksmithing and jewel guide. Let's start with the basics of blacksmithing so you fully understand the best way to upgrade armor and how to do it quickly. So when you start the game, each piece of gear that you get will have a number by it. Either it will have no number, meaning it's not upgraded at all, or a plus six or a plus seven. And that means that's how many levels that piece of gear is upgraded. As you can see here, the plus seven on my gear means it's upgraded seven levels. And in order to upgrade it to an eighth level, I need to use rank eight leather. This works the exact same way for weapons as well. If they're level eight, you need level nine materials to upgrade them up another level with a max, I believe, of level nine. Now, if you ever run out of upgrade materials, there is a fast way to make sure you get those. So you're gonna wanna farm those originally from the missions themselves. So if I need rank seven steel, for my weapon what I'm gonna do is come here and farm rank 7 steel you can see I get three by completing this mission you also get rank 7 materials throughout the mission as well looting loot spots chests etc now by far the fastest way to get this upgrade material is to do sub battlefields so a sub battlefield that has this rank material unlocked you can do it the sub battlefields are way quicker and you will get that material way faster because they're literally like 10 times as fast as the main missions the other best way to get materials for upgrading gear is to actually salvage gear that you're not going to use for instance if i salvage this plus six bamboo crossbow you can see on the right it's going to give me one rank six steel now if i check that crossbow and this rank five crossbow and then salvage them you can see it's going to give me one piece of steel or one piece of upgrade material per salvage that you do and this is why it's so important to salvage your gear instead of selling it now while we're on the topic of selling and salvaging gear this is also one important thing that you need to pay attention to so you should always salvage your gear always every single time and i'll show you why normally this pole arm we can sell for 8,000 copper if we swap over to salvage it we'll actually get 11 jewel fragments out of that and the rank 6 steel material so if we salvage that we're actually going to go over here and sell our jewel fragments which we got 11 of at a thousand a piece and you can actually sell those 11 jewel fragments for 11,000 which is way more than the weapon would even sell for anyways and you can just sell everything right here it's way better you get way more materials this way never sell your gear again and if you do I will find you and I will well never mind so the main takeaway I want everybody to say at once salvage your gear great job guys and before we get into the details of embedding and how to embed your gear the best way possible we're also going to go over three more things that are going to help you tremendously so one of the problems this game has for some is having so much gear you don't know what to do with it all well if you take a quick look through this gear and nothing looks appealing to you or let's say or let's say you find a piece of gear that looks appealing to you or let's say you get an armor set, right? Like one of the armor sets you get from your companions that's super useful and you don't wanna lose these sets because they're tier four gear and they're hard to get otherwise. So what you need to do is get all your gear from all your sets that you have, find that piece of gear and go in and lock that gear. So you can see the yellow icon disappeared because I unlocked that gear. You're gonna go in and lock it. Now, once you've locked all your main gear, it can't be sold, edited, or anything until you unlock it. Meaning once you take a look through everything and you don't immediately like something, you already have all your gear locked, so you don't have to worry about accidentally selling it or anything like that. And that makes it easy to just go salvage, click the analog to check all your gear, and this will check all of your gear if you notice except for your locked gear. Uh, so that way you can get rid of any extra gear all in one go and you don't have to spend 10 years selling this stuff. In case you're ever looking for a particular piece of gear, you can visit the old man in the village and you can select accolade rewards. So you actually get accolades by killing other players in game when they already invade you. You can then come through here and actually roll specific gear to try and get, if you're looking for it, let's say a tier four item or a tier four sword specifically, you can come in here, use some accolade points, roll a sword and wait and continue to try this until you get one. This way by defending from invasions or doing invading yourself, you can get accolade points to put towards these accolade rewards and roll good or better gear. One other big thing that a lot of people don't know is if you talk to the blacksmith and you click 
any of these tabs. When you're on any of them, you can actually hover and find a weapon. Maybe you want a weapon for later because you can hold 500 maximum things in your inventory. And what you can do with additional armor sets, if say you're not going to use them right now, but you want to make room for other gear or you just want to clear your inventory, you can actually, you can actually hover over that item click it and hit send to storehouse. This is going to send it to your storehouse, which is kind of like your backup area to store things. And you have 2000 spots in there to use. So all you have to do from this menu is hit X and it will take you straight to your storehouse where you can see I've just stored this item. That way you don't accidentally sell it and you can put other items that might be of interest to you later in here. Now with all that out of the way, hopefully you learned something new in there that you didn't already know, but let's get right into the bread and butter of this, which is embedding. So when you go to embed items, there are four different tier levels of gear. So you have one to four star gear, one star has one slot, two star has two slots, three and four and so on up to five. So in order to actually embed a special effect on an item, you're going to have to have a space available to change. So if I click on this tier three star dual halberds and I choose an embedding slot, there are three already here, meaning I can't put another effect here unless I remove one. So if I remove an effect here, it will remove it. It will give me jewel fragments for removing it. And then it also takes jewel fragments as you can see here on the right, it'll cost 50 jewel fragments to put an effect on this weapon. I can scroll through and put any effect on it I want. I'll go over the different special effect types in a minute, but you do need jewel fragments to do this and a lot of them if you want to upgrade a lot of your gear and change it around, which is why salvaging your gear is so important. This is also one of the biggest tips to this. So you also need copper and eventually you can see I only have 130,000 copper left because it's very expensive. So if I take this plus eight dual halberds and I go to put an enchantment on it, it's going to cost me 26,000 copper to actually do that, which is insanely expensive. One tip that you can use for this is making sure you embed your gear early before you upgrade it. So a lot of these armor sets that come from companions, which is what people are using for builds, start out at level one, meaning they're not leveled up yet. So if you're going to make a build and you're going to pick an armor set, make sure you embed these items first in the armor before you upgrade it and it will save you like literally a million copper and this is probably the biggest mistake people are making in this game right now so if you see i'm going to unlock this armor just as an example i'm going to choose it i'm going to choose an embedding slot and i'm going to get rid of the water phase consumption now when i go to embed this item again you can see it only cost me 3000 copper here to do that. Also, if you want to take a look at this, I'm going to throw the upgrading weapons table and the armor table for how much it costs to upgrade these pieces on the screen in case you want to look it over. So the way Wolong Fallen Dynasty works is if you find an item, let's say this one that has the flame resistance effect on it. As soon as you pick that item up in your inventory, you are automatically going to unlock that potential upgrade, which means you'll be able to put that on other gear besides this. Now there's one other main type of enchantment that you actually have to salvage your gear for and get one of them each time you find one of these pieces of armor. So what I mean by that is this hero crown. If I choose an embedding slot, you can see there's a circle icon on the special effect, which is power drop upon fatal strike on enemy. That circle indicates that it is one of the special effects that you have to have one of in order to use. So you can't just put it on any piece of gear whenever you want. You have to have one. So in order to get one, if you salvage this piece of gear, you can see the salvageable jewelry essence below. If you salvage this piece of gear or salvage this effect off of this piece of armor, either will work. You actually get one of those power drop special effects to use on any other gear basically that you want. So those are the two distinctions, the special effects that you can put on anytime you want and the special effects that you have to have at least one of in order to at least put it on some gear. Now, from my understanding, you can't have and stack multiple of these exact same special effects. You have to put different ones on different pieces of gear. So I don't believe you can put power drop upon fatal strike on enemy as an example on every piece of gear that you have. I just don't think it lets you and I don't think it works that way. There's actually one other kind of special effect and it's the ones that you cannot remove. And the way you can tell this is if we unlock this gear, what this actually looks like is this top special effect. So you can see the three below it only have rectangles or kind of half of a square in the background of each of the symbols. This one has two rectangles. So it has a full square in the background that's blue. You can see if I click A on the special effect, it's not going to let me remove it because that indicates it can't be removed from the item. If I go down to this one that just has a rectangle in the background, I can click it and remove it. So if you ever find an item where you can't remove an effect, 
That is why. Additionally, you want to put obviously the most useful effects pertaining to your build on your armor and gear and weapons. So for flame and damage builds, adding things like damage dealt is always one of the best things to put on gear because it works overall. Flame attack power or whatever attack power you have for your build specifically. Other accumulation for enemies that work towards your build. And you can spec this out to be very specific to your build. So don't just put on a set. Make sure you put on a set and specialize the effects to get the best use out of your build in general. Now you can't go and stack multiple damage dealt effects, for instance, on this one piece of gear and have four of them. Once you use certain effects like damage dealt, it takes other damage dealt effects away so that you can't put them on this gear. So you can only use one specific type of certain effect for a lot of different effects on gear at a time. So only one damage effect. Attack power effects, you can use as many as you want on a piece of gear, but some others are restricted, especially the damage dealt. So you have to pick which damage you wanna deal add it to the weapon, and that's your choice. So finally, the last kind of special effect is certain pieces of armor, especially armor sets that come from companions that you earn, will have special effects on them for set bonuses. On that set, if you hit the right trigger, you can actually go and see the set bonuses for each piece of gear that you have. Now this special effect obviously cannot be removed and it's just an extra bonus on top of your regular special effects, which is why armor sets in this game are so popular. So get an armor set, but make sure you customize the actual special effects to match your build. Now remember when upgrading your gear, you can actually upgrade your ranged weapons as well, meaning you can put special effects on your ranged weapons and it will contribute to your overall stats in general. So make sure if you have another main weapon or other ranged weapons that you do put some effects on them that match your build because they do accumulate over time. One other thing to mention is that lower level items, when you upgrade them, will just naturally become better, but so will the attack bonuses. So if you see this Sword of You the Great, it has a B in metal. And if you compare it to something else like this, everything has an A, which tells you obviously this is the better weapon, right? But this weapon isn't upgraded at all where this other set of dual swords is a plus eight. So you can see you have a D minus, E minus, and B. If you are to upgrade this item, it actually upgrades the attack bonuses as well. So you can see now we're up to a C. If we upgrade it again, it then goes up to a C minus and a D minus, etc. until you get to something like this where you get a lot of bonuses from the weapons themselves. Make sure if ever you're wondering why you're doing a build and trying to get stats for your items and test things out, you can actually look at the status tab and see all of your stats individually. Another thing is if you hit the description button, which it says down at the bottom, you can hover over every one of these options in this game and it tells you what it is. So that way you can actually learn what they are and not just guess. Now for your accessories, you can't actually remove these special effects or embed new ones in them. You have to find good accessories as you go throughout the game. Now there are certain places in the game you can actually go to re-roll these specific effects, meaning you can go up to one of the pandas on the map. You can then actually drop this tier 4 accessory and he will spit you back out another tier 4 accessory that either you may like or you may not like. If you don't like it, you can actually... So if you don't like it at that point, just immediately back out to the title menu, reload back into the game. You'll go back to your last battle flag that you rested at. You can then again walk up to the panda and try this again to get a better accessory. That's how blacksmithing and jewel embedding works in this entire game. And that's all basically the information that you'll need to know regarding this. So, so if this was informative, drop a like and subscribe on the left and make sure to check out a Wolong video on the right. That being said, thank you guys.